everybody hope you're doing well today thanks again for joining me it's day 65 take a journey with me i'm going to be speaking about something else from a writing class that i've had those creative arts and writing series that i'm doing with the va and have done with the va um, we had a particular writing prompt um, that was just really touching for me and something i wrote that she gave us that just kind of just spewed out of me and i couldn't hold it back um, so if you're going through anything today, maybe this type of writing prompt could help you and find different things that have you writing prompts to see what, you know, it's kind of like looking at art. Everybody sees something different. So everybody can write, you know, do in our class, they did write something different from what you see in this, um, prompt. And it was a picture of a, a green field and then, um, the clouds were, you know, kind of, um, out there almost dark. And, and then there was a door in the middle of the field. And we were asked to write something about what we would imagine finding on the other side of the door. I really believe this challenge could help you as much as it did me. And what I wrote is heart-wrenching. But these thoughts came quickly to my mind, like I said. And also, I pray that my words... In my words, with the true reason of my sharing them, are not for pity. I hope you see this. Um, I want you to see that, yeah, I'm doing these journey things, and maybe some people think I got it all together, but I don't. But if you listen to enough of them, you know I'm sharing some pretty heavy stuff. Our traumas stay with us. It's just that we constantly need to work on how we live with it, you know, how we let it affect us or don't let it affect us. And I just want to show that I, I, I'm, I'm there too, but I'm learning more tools every day how to, how to deal with it. And sometimes triggers bring it back. So you kind of bring that back in with things like this. Um, so I'm going to share some Bible verses that are aligned with the topic, and then I'll read what I wrote. Uh, the, the Bible mentions uh, many times where the firstborn sons were killed in a community. Um, in Exodus um, chapters 11 and 12, Pharaoh's son because of his decrees and, you know, his, well, really because him not letting the Israelites go. And this was like the last straw, basically, um, with uh, Moses and Pharaoh going back and forth by Jesus's lead, of course. And so all, all the innocent children in Egypt and around the areas, um, their, and their family, their mothers, especially, um, but Pharaoh's child died because of his wrongdoing. And Herod decreed when Jesus was born in Matthew 2 that all sons were to be killed in Bethlehem. So the children and their mothers whew, were innocent victims. However, Joseph and Mary got word. Joseph had the dream about that. And that was to try and, you know, Herod's whole goal was to get, so Jesus wouldn't grow up to be what he was foretold to be. Other women in the Bible that have lost their children, of course, we spoke about Mother Mary, and everybody knows this. She gave up her son. She knew it when she had him, when she got pregnant, but it doesn't make it easy, right? She gave him up to ministry and then had to see him die on the cross. But the beautiful thing is he was resurrected, came back in three days, and they're together in heaven now. Um, then there's Bathsheba in 2 Samuel chapter 12. In verse 14, it specifically talks about where their child died, she and David's. And it's really because of David's sins. And she was in a rock and a hard place, Bathsheba was. And there's a lot of different schools of thought on that. Was she there willingly or not and so forth. But nonetheless, her baby died. And I know she had to grieve over that. Then the mother of Moses in Exodus chapter 2, you know, to me it was, she was very brave and to put her son in that basket in the Nile River, um, but she was blessed, however, to help raise the son because of how circumstances worked out. And then this is kind of different, but this is interesting because there was a whole situation of judge of sorts that made a decision or helped the two mothers make a decision. These were two prostitutes in those times in 1 Kings chapter 3 specifically in verses 16 to um, 28, but these two women were living in the same house and they had babies three days apart. Well, the lady that had her baby second 
rolled over her baby and the baby died in, in the sleep. Um, so she accidentally killed her baby, but she took the other lady's baby and claimed it as hers when they had the baby first. So they went to like a court of sorts and the truth was noticeable when the man who chose that made the decision and the court was, he said, you know, who let's split the baby up and you can each have the baby. It sounds harsh, but it didn't happen. But it was the way you found out who the true mother of the baby was, was saying, no, don't split the baby up. She can keep the baby because she cared more about the baby being alive and having a life than her even having the baby. It's kind of like Mother Mary, right? She, you know, let him go. But this mother did get to keep her baby. So those are references of the Bible. And, you know, there's loss all over the Bible. And there's some things we can learn from. And I, I hope you can learn from this. So, again, this is what I wrote. I found myself in an open field with lushy green grass. The skies were almost eerie. And I had chills throughout my spine. It wasn't but seconds, and I came upon a door, a portal of sense. I pondered a few moments before making the decision to open this door. Still very hesitant and quite timid, too, I peeked my head in to look all around inside. I quickly, then I quickly heard a voice, a beautiful child's voice. He said, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. It started my heart pounding, yet I couldn't help myself from entering the unknown space now. Once I allowed myself to fully enter this portal I saw, I felt that I was in the most peaceful place that I have ever encountered. This precious voice called out to me again. I saw this vibrant, healthy, and beautiful little boy. Could it really be my baby boy? He came running to me and I to him. We embraced and my heart was overflowing with something even beyond the feeling of joy. He told me he loved me and proceeded to tell me he has heard my cries to and for him. That he is happy and I should feel happy for him. That I should let go of any guilt for his being there in heaven without me. He and Jesus forgave me and both loved me unconditionally. It was then that I awoke, back in my bed at home. But this time I awoke with a sense of peace and calm that I have never felt in my life before. This feeling was one I have longed for for more, many years now. What is it that you need unconditional forgiveness from? Or do you have a child that you're missing? It could be any kind of loss, maybe a other loved one that's, you know, speaking out to you and giving you that peace and closure you need. Go to God and do these types of writing prompts that help you work out your emotions. It's just a blessing to get closer to God that way. As always, I love y'all. I'll do something more enlightening tomorrow. Bye-bye. God bless.